Hi, and welcome to this body clock yin flow. Okay, so we're going to be working on a practice which is very much about finding balance and harmony through the whole body, synchronizing all our systems. We're going to start with some breathing. We're going to bring one hand to the chest and one hand onto the abdomen and just relax the shoulders. Let the eyes close and just tune into the body. Just feel the coming and going of the breath within the body. Feeling the chest gently lift on the in-breath and the chest gently descend on the out-breath. Feeling the whole body breathing in and the whole body exhaling. As you breathe in, it feels as if the body is gently expanding. And as you exhale, the body is gently contracting. If the mind is busy, if the mind is active, see if you can just focus a little bit more on the exhalation to help to quieten the mind down. We have to work hard to focus on the breathing as the mind tries to pull us away. And as you breathe, just set the intention. I'm going to practice this body clock yin practice to synchronize and harmonize the entire body and its systems. Setting the intention to breathe in and out calmly throughout the practice. To help to move towards a more balanced and centered state. Feel the connection between the body and the ground underneath you. And spine relaxed. The whole body breathing in through the belly, the ribs, the chest. And the whole body exhaling from the shoulders through the chest, rib cage, belly. Feel the intention of receiving the breath without effort. And as you exhale, letting go of what's now help, not helpful, whether that's thoughts, emotions, worries, troubles. Just seeing if we can calm and quieten the mind down with every single breath. Once you've established this breathing, you try to maintain that breathing throughout the practice. And very gently release the arms down. Just let them rest on the lap for a moment. Relaxing the shoulders. We're going to come into our first pose. So we're going through these postures linked with the five elements. We start with the metal element for the lung and the large intestines. So we're going to really focus on opening across the chest into the bow point for the lung, which is lung one, just beneath the outer third area of the collarbones. If you find your collarbones, just come down a little bit. This is the area that we're really trying to expand and open. And I'm just going to build up a little support for the head. And this is going to be for my shoulders. 
if you haven't got a bolster, you could just use a folded blanket just to give a little bit of a raise, but then you wouldn't need the, the blocks for your head. So I'm coming to find a position where I can rest the shoulders over the support. You can, my hands are just sort of dropping down to touch the ground and the head is going to drop back onto the support. So what I don't want is the head to be sort of hanging in limbo. So with these poses, with the legs, you can have the legs bent, feet to standing, knees falling in and touching. You could take Baddha Konasana, but that's obviously going to be a little bit stronger. So just see where your body's at and making sure the head is supported if you're in this position. If you're lower down, if you're just on blankets, then obviously that's completely fine just to have the head on the ground. Focus on this opening through the front of the chest, particularly on these bow points for the lung meridian. The lung meridian runs down the arms on the sort of upper inner edge of the arm, the thumb side of the arm. And as you breathe, you're breathing in a sense of openness and expansion, feeling a space in the body. Letting go of any tension, any discomfort. Letting the back of the wrists rest down towards the ground. Notice if maybe one wrist is a little bit closer to the ground than the other. And see if you can allow that wrist that's a little bit higher just to drop a little bit deeper. Try to reconnect in with the breathing that we had when we were seated. So a nice slow breath in and out. Filling from the bottom to the top and emptying from the top to the bottom. Working with the metal elements, which when in balance, we can feel very structured, very organized, really know our boundaries, know what we want, know what we don't want. But when out of balance, we can lose track of our parameters, our boundaries. We can sometimes feel isolated from others. We can become too structured, we can become overly obsessed by details. And through this practice, we really are trying to create a sense of equilibrium and balance throughout the whole body. Just experience that lovely stretch through the front of the body. Okay, so just doing that for just over two minutes. So that's sufficient. So bringing the legs back in if they're in a cross position like mine. Bring the arms in gently by the sides of the body. Just take a moment with the arms just resting onto the belly or by the side of you. And just notice the after effect of each pose as you take it. And then just kind of rest on your side and make your way up to a comfortable seated position. As we come to the second pose. So we're going to take an inversion. I've got a blanket here for my head. I'm just moving this bolster out of the way. Coming to take the body upside down. So if, if being upside down isn't something that is working for you today, then just resting in a child's pose. But coming to rest right on the very top of the head. If you were to draw a line between each ear to the very center of your head, that's the point that we're trying to rest. It's not the forehead, but this 100 meetings point is called right on the very, very top of the head. So making sure that the hips are elevated. And then either with the hands just placed on the ground either side of you just to sort of almost stop you from touching the ground quite as much or if possible interlacing the fingers behind the head and if you press the thumbs into the fleshy area between the index finger and thumb and the index finger points away 
to create the stretch in the arms. So the large intestine, which is the paired linked meridian, runs from the index finger all the way up through the back of the arms to the shoulder. Just along the shoulder to the neck and then crosses the face to the nose. And obviously with this inversion, we're really helping to allow ourselves to move inwards a little bit more with the practice. Moving towards calmness and stillness, more introversion. Just letting gravity help. Maybe you can adjust the arms and send them a little bit deeper into the pose. If the sensation gets too much, bringing the hands down to help support you. If not, we're just going to hold this for a little bit longer. Noticing what comes up as you practice and noticing the physical body. Okay, then release the arms down, bring the hands to the ground and very gently make your way back into child's pose. Stay down, so don't lift the head, just rest the forehead on the back of the hands and just completely give in to the sensations as they arise. Noticing sensations as they come up in the body as you practice. And very gently coming on up to seated. So we're going to take um, a back bend now for moving into the earth element. Going to support the knees on a little bit of padding, a bit of cushioning, and either having the toes tucked under or the feet flat. I'm going to bring the bolster in for me because I want something just to rest the fingertips on. Um, this might be too much. You might need to come and just bring the hands into the lower back in order to support the back. So this is the first pose that we're going to do for the earth element. The earth element is. Um, really about feeling centered and feeling very grounded. The meridians are the stomach and the spleen. The stomach runs down the front of the body, from the face, through the front of the body, down the legs, the outer legs, all the way to the feet. And the spleen runs up the inside of the legs, up the sides of the body and ends underneath the arms. So this posture, this back bend, really does open up into the stomach meridian. So bringing the hands onto the support, allowing the hips to feel as if they're still moving forwards. I'm just gonna set my timer for this. Again, these first few poses, we're not holding for too long. The head, you can drop the head back a little bit as you open up into the front of the body. If this is too intense for your neck, then obviously just keep the head a little bit further forwards. And find a place, remember with these poses, because we're holding them for time, that isn't too intense. It's a little bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. She's trying to find the perfect place to sit. So she doesn't want the chair that's too hard. She doesn't want the chair that's too soft. She wants the chair that's just right. So that's what we want with the poses. Because we're holding them for longer periods of time, we can't put the body into too strong a shape. So really feeling the opening through the front of the body, particularly the bow points in the front of the body. And letting the shoulders relax down. A little bit of a stretch into the front of the neck. If you can let the head move back and a little bit of shortening into the back of the neck. There's a few muscles that are linked to the to the organs, to the elements. So the anterior and posterior neck muscles we're working on here, the pectoral muscles. And just feel, breathe in a feeling of being centered, being harmonized, being grounded. Just gonna take a couple more breaths. And then very gently bring the chin into the chest, very gently lifting up out of the pose, 
releasing down into a forward fold just to counterpose and just resting for a moment in that forward fold just to notice the effects maybe stacking the hands one on top of the other as you rest the rib cage along the thighs as you breathe Notice the rebound, how the body feels after the pose, and then slowly lifting the body up and releasing and coming down to seated. So we're going to come into a seated forward fold, working with the spleen meridian. You can have the legs in a butterfly shape. So the spleen, in order to really access the spleen meridian, we need to have quite a, a sort of nice deep V shape or, or diamond shape with the legs. The closer the legs get in, the more it gets into the kidneys, which are a much deeper meridian than the legs. The spleen just comes on the inside of the legs. So we want a nice big open shape and the feet nicely in front of us. And we're gonna come into a doable forward fold. So for some of you, that might mean if you have a bolster, bringing in a bolster that you can rest along. This is quite a popular way to rest if you need to keep the back a little bit more upright. You could maybe even hog hold of your bolster, depending on how squishy it is, to keep yourself a little bit more upright. I like in this pose to support the knees. So I'm gonna bring in a blanket on one side and a couple of blocks on the other side. Remember, you can make do with cushions. And I'm going to come into my forward fold. Let's get the timer started. And we're going to spend a little bit longer in this. And I'm just going to rest my thumbs into a point, which is just on the inside edge of the foot, just beneath the ball of the foot is spleen three and I'm just going to press my thumbs gently into this point so sort of at the base of the big toe and I'm just pushing sort of up and onto the ball of the foot but I'm on the edge of the foot this is just to help tonify the spleen energy letting the body come forward and down and resting in the pose getting this lovely stretch all the way down through the back of the body helping to harmonize. So sort of exploring the movement a little bit, exploring the pose. And then once I come to a place where I feel I can rest, seeing if I can find stillness. And this is the key to this yin practice. The stillness and focusing on the breathing is what moves us into this more relaxed state. Working with the earth elements when out of balance. We can feel worried. We can feel imbalanced. And so this practice is to help us to find that sense of empathy understanding and harmony again. Letting go of any worry or self-doubt. Really more confident, more, more stable, more supported by the ground that's underneath us. And you can really encourage these emotions by breathing them into the body. So with every inhale, Breathe in that empathy, that confidence, that self-worth. Feeling supported. And let go of any worry, any doubt, any lack of confidence. Just gently opening into the inner thighs. And a forward fold like this really is a go-to pose for moving into a calm and relaxed state. And 
I suppose that I go to when I do feel out of balance, out of whack. But making sure it's not too intense, it's not too deep. Really nourishing yourself with the poses. Important quality part of the earth practice is this idea of nourishment. We'll just take another two breaths here as we finish the earth element, the second phase in our body clock. And then very gently lifting up the body, walking the hands back, just using your hands to bring the legs together. Sometimes you can feel very old in between the postures and just sitting upright and just noticing the body. Just reconnecting to the breath, noticing the legs, noticing where we've worked. We're gonna come down onto our backs for the next pose. We're just gonna explore one pose. Bringing the knees into the body, having a little rock from side to side. So coming to work with a pose for a primary fire. So you're going to roll onto your left side. Just support the head for a moment. And we're going to bring in a support. I'm just going to use a block here because it's a bit lower and you can see a bit better. But a bolster would be ideal as well. I'm going to let the top leg come forward and the bottom leg move back a little bit. So the bottom hip cuts under a little bit, the top hip moves forwards a little bit. And I'm just going to support that top leg on this block. The bottom leg then, I'm going to bend it so I can reach down to catch the ankle. I'm going to show you from the side as well in a minute. And the bottom leg then, if I've hold of the ankle, I can draw it back a little bit further. So if I do that from the side, you can see a bit easier walking this bottom thigh back in order to create a stronger stretch through the quadriceps of that bottom leg. And the top leg, I'm going to support on either a bolster or on a block. If you can't reach this foot with your hand, you could use a strap around it, a loop of a strap. But that's not the end of the pose. It's called cat pulling its tail. Once we've found the arrangement, we're going to see if we can lower the, the upper body down to find a little bit of a twist through the body. This top arm is going to reach away. So it's quite a sort of complicated pose in as much as quite a lot going on. Making sure that if this rotation through the spine is too intense, then you could always stay and just rest on the side and just focus on the stretch into the quad. I'll put the timer on. If this other shoulder is lifting slightly, then you could bring in a blanket and just rest that blanket underneath the shoulder so you've got that little bit of support there. Or maybe you might need something for the head. The arm that's not being used can just extend away from you. And in this upper arm is the stretch into the heart meridian. So for, for the fire elements, we're working with primary fire, we're working with the heart and the small intestine, heart in this arm running from the armpit all the way down the inner arm to the baby finger, and small intestine in the other arm, which is reaching for the foot from the baby finger all the way out the back of the arm into the shoulder comes around the neck and it comes into the face and it ends it comes into the face and across over to the ear so just feeling that really lovely stretch into the shoulder 
So once you've found the place where you can rest and stay, you just give in to relaxation, you give in to time. Feeling the stretch through the front of the bottom leg. It's the quad, quad is one of the linked muscles for the fire element. Also getting this nice rotation through the rib cage, which is helping to work through the abdominal muscles. Again, a linked muscle. Maybe just focus on really increasing feelings of contentment and harmony in the body. When we're working with the heart, the heart is the sort of main organ of the body. And it's like our ruler of all our systems and organs. And what we look for in a leader is someone who can lead in a harmonious way for all its subjects. So we want our heart to be content harmonious and happy so that it can do the best job possible. So as you breathe, breathe in contentment, breathe in happiness. Joy is the real sort of emotion associated with the fire element. But that can be out of balance as well. So an imbalance of the fire element would be someone maybe who was a little bit manic, maybe someone who was talking too quickly, someone who was too expressive. And so what we're looking for is that balance of joy, where we can feel that harmony and contentment, we can feel calm, we can feel our thoughts are balanced, we can talk and communicate easily with others. This really is a lovely stretch, just checking my time, yeah, so been here for about three minutes. Let's just take a little bit longer. We'll do three and a half. It's a lovely pose, one of my favorite poses, this. When you come out of it, just let go of the bottom foot so that leg can stretch away. Release the top arm. Just roll onto your back for a moment. Just center the hips. And I like just to stretch the legs away and just notice the body in between the poses, relaxing the shoulders down. Notice the difference between the sides. The areas that you worked. And then I'm just going to go straight into the other side. So I'm shifting the hips a little bit to the left to allow the legs to fall to the right. Remember reaching down for that bottom leg, cutting that bottom hip under a little bit to allow the top hip to move forwards a little bit. And it can take a little bit of squirming around to find the shape. Letting the top knee rest onto a support. You could choose a bolster or a block. If you can't reach this foot, then obviously coming to, sorry, I'm just going to get this time set up again, then coming to use a strap. See if you can create the rotation by drawing the shoulders to point towards the ceiling. Remember, if this is too much, adding the rotation, then just staying on the side instead. The arm that's not in use can extend away, which really opens up into that heart meridian in the arm. And take a nice big breath in, exhale with a sigh. <sighs> Just explore calmly, smoothly and gently into this pose. So you're getting a nice quad stretch on the bottom leg. You're getting a rotation through the spine. And also a little bit of a feeling of a back bend as well making the connection to the two meridians, the heart and this top arm from the armpit. Just let your mind travel down that inner arm all the way to the baby finger, maybe lingering around the wrist area. There's a few points there that really help to calm anxiety, harmonize the mind, quiet the thinking down. Even focusing right into the palm of the hand as well. And then 
the small intestine, which I love working with, the small intestine, that's a little bit like the bouncer deciding what the body takes in and what it lets go, what it's going to assimilate into the body. So this can be not only food and nourishment, but it's also thoughts, ideas, concepts. And if we can't absorb these things into the body, then they're of no use to us. If you can't absorb the nourishment, if you can put all the most brilliant food into the body possible, but if, you, if it all just moves straight out, then you're not going to get the nourishment from it. You're not going to get the nutrients from it. The same with our thinking. We need to make sure that the, the thoughts that we have are really supporting us. Breathe in that calmness, that peacefulness, that tranquilness to support a happy heart. Let go of anything that's not supporting you, any disharmony. Just increasing contentment. Okay. And as you stay in these poses, the body does get a little bit more used to the shape. And what you need to try to do is just not let the body get distracted by wanting to move. Staying there for time to get this benefit of moving into stillness. Harmonizing and balancing these meridian lines in the body like energy lines running through our fascia of the body just under the surface of the skin just release the pose just gently don't come out of the poses quickly just adjust center of the hips take a moment remember expect to be a little bit uncomfortable straight away and then that quickly goes just rest maybe stretch the legs out notice the difference between the sides give yourself just a few moments in between each pose as the body starts to move into a more relaxed state these moments seem to lengthen through the practice you sort of want to just stay here a little bit longer so from primary fire, we're going to come into the water element. So rolling onto your belly. Now I like to do this pose, Sphinx pose, with a bolster. So I'm going to bring the bolster in. If you haven't got a bolster, you can just do this pose directly onto the ground. So again, just sort my timer out. So wriggling the hips in here, nice and close to the support. And having the forearms resting on the ground, the tops of the feet resting on the floor, shoulders drawing down away from the ears. So the Sphinx pose, I'm gonna stay here for about three and a half, four minutes. So make sure it's a pose that you can stay in. You could lift to the slightly stronger shape for just a little bit more compression through the back, or you can stay here and just rest the head down. If this is too intense for the head and neck, you could build up a support for the head. So you could rest the head onto something, okay? So I'm gonna do a combination of lifting and lowering. So I'm gonna bring the hands to the ground, rest in my sort of rib cage against the bolster for support and just letting the tops of the feet press into the ground. As I, my arms get tired or if I get any tingling sensation, I'm gonna come down onto my forearms. Breathing in and out, slowly relaxing the shoulders. So working with the bladder and the kidney for the water elements. The bladder meridian is like a great big super highway that runs down the back of the body, like a motorway. And it really is linked with our nervous system 
and particularly uh, moving towards a more relaxed state of our parasympathetic nervous system. And this opening is opening into the front of the body where the kidney meridian runs up from the bubbling spring in the sole of the foot all the way up through the inner thighs, very deep into the inner thighs, through the abdomen, all the way up through the center of the body and ends just underneath the collarbone. So that idea of just opening into just under the collarbones as you breathe. The water element is very much about being able to move forwards in life sort of easily, being able to move around obstacles, sort of dodging the obstacles that's falling your path. I'm not always the best at that. Let the shoulders relax. And I'm just going to lower for a few breaths. So I'm keeping the shape, but I'm just staying in a slightly gentler shape just for about a minute. And then I might lift for the last bit of the pose. This pose really does stimulate um, the kidneys in the back of the body. The kidneys are like the sort of batteries of the body. And this sort of house just above the back of the waist. And this back bend, which is a shape I could stay in for ages, just feels really good for recharging and rebooting. In TCM, there's um, something called Jing, spelled J-I-N-G, which is energy that we are supposed to have in our bodies. We get most of it from our genetics, from our parents. And that is the sort of um, prenatal gene. That's the gene that you can't change. It's like a deposit account of energy. And you really don't want to start using that energy up. When it's used up, it's all gone. But what we also have is a postnatal like bank account of energy, like a current account of energy. And that can be topped up through good practices, through the foods that we eat, through practices like yoga, qigong and yin yoga. And at certain times in our life, we might use this energy up a little bit more quickly, say when we're in our 20s, out partying, socializing, drinking. And we get really depleted and de-energized. But by doing good practices and nourishing ourselves well, we can top up these current accounts like a bank account of energy, this jing, this essence, this life essence, and we can live a longer, happier life. And you know when you've topped these energy reserves up, you know when you've got that feeling, your body feels more in harmony, you're able to think more clearly focus. So I really do recommend taking a few back bends to help to top up your Jing energy account within your body. Okay, so that's four and a half minutes. So very gently lowering down. Remember, it's fine to come out of these poses at any point. I'm going to push back very gently into child's pose and just take that for a moment. You could bring the bolster in and just rest on the bolster for a moment, just while the body settles and sorts itself out. Relaxing the shoulders, absorbing and soaking in that energy, topping up that current account of energy, like recharging the batteries in the back of the body. And then lifting, we're going to come to a forward fold. Caterpillar, so still working with the water element. So we're doing two for this. The, with the forward fold, I'm going to just put a little bit of a blanket roll underneath the knees. You could sit on a raise as well, if that's helpful. Um, and 
I'm going to bring the bolster across the body, across the legs, but you could lay it this way again, as we did before, you could prop the body. If you need to be in a slightly more upright position, then this is a really good one. I'm going to use it across the body so that I can come forward and I'm going to press into some points on the bladder meridian. So I'm just going to reset my timer. What are we doing for time? So we're going to take this one for three minutes. And the points here, there's just right on the inner corner of the eyebrow. It's bladder two. I love this point for resting. Really good for any tension that you're experiencing around the eyes, for headaches. And you just let the thumbs gently sort of burrow into the bone, like a little notch at that point. Other fingers can just rest. If it's not accessible to do that, you can just rest the hands on the legs, but it is quite nice to support the head. And making sure you're into the pose as deeply as feels nourishing. So remember, it's sort of about 80% maximum into the pose. You would never go 100% to where the body can be. The intensity of the stretch would be too much for the body to hold for time. We want to stress the areas of the body that we're working on a little bit, just to help to reset the sort of stuckness that happens through the jobs that we do, the sitting too long or the sporting activities that we do too much of. And in this forward fold, really thinking about quietening and calming the mind. Really restful for the whole system. When out of balance, water can run all over the place. If you drop a glass of water on a hard surface, it goes everywhere out of control. So imbalance, the water is controlled and it flows smoothly forwards through life around those obstacles and things that fall in its way. And we're able to see clearly the, the path of direction that we need to follow. So breathe in that calmness, that stillness, that quietness. The water elements is, is associated with winter. It's to do with maximum yin normally practice this in the winter time when it's very much the most contracted time of year maximum year and coldest time of year so stillness depth are really lovely words to use to help you to connect to that imbalance Feel the back as if someone is just stroking down either side of your spine, smoothing away any discomfort that you might experience. Just letting the shoulders rest down. I'm not really stretching into the back of the legs too much by having the legs on a little bit of a raise. And focus on that parasympathetic nervous system, that rest and digest response. Good. That's three and a half minutes. So very gently coming out of it. Very gently lifting up. Just taking the hands behind you. Just pushing back a little bit to release. And just move in the bolster to the side and the blanket. And just sit and notice the body for a moment. It's nice to do this. This gives you a chance just to see if there's been a shift or a change. There's been a little bit of a difference. So we're going to come down and work with secondary fire. Again, a support for the legs. I'm going to bring the bolster in this time. And we're going to move into a twist and so moving the hips a little bit to the right 
I'm going to straighten the left leg and then I'm going to draw this right leg across and make sure that I've got a really good support for the right leg so it's not too intense. And again, bring the shoulders down to see if I can make contact with the ground and moving stuff out of the way so that I can bring the arms down to the floor. Again, I just need to set my timer up here. Let's bring something in. Bringing the arms out nice and wide. And we're working into this rotation. So again, we're working into sort of abdominal muscles, making sure the rotation isn't too strong. With the arms, we're gonna work with the meridians in the arms in the pose. So we're gonna bring the right palm down and the left palm is gonna face up. And the head, you're gonna just turn the head away from that left palm. In fact, let's switch, let's bring the left palm down, sorry, and the right palm up. So we're gonna work with the pericardium in this right arm, which is right down the center of the arm. So I want you to really think about opening up that palm and having it facing the ceiling. And then the left palm that's down, we're going to work on the triple heater in that arm. So I'm going to talk through where the meridians are. So making sure the leg is supported and comfortable. The head is just lifted and gently dropping towards the direction of the right hand. Feeling the stretch through the side of the neck. So the pericardium and the triple heater associated with the fire element again, but secondary fire. They really are to do with the sort of smooth running of our emotions, calmness, contentedness, tranquilness. I love working with the pericardium or the heart's governor, heart protector as it's called in TCM. And if you focus on this right arm, it starts just on the side of the chest, it comes up and down the very center of the arm, all the way through the center of the forearm, center of the wrist, into the palm, to the middle finger. And as we did before with the, when we were working with the heart meridian, really think about that point in the center of the palm that's on the pericardium meridian with the lagum point. If you fold that middle finger in to touch your palm, where your finger touches, that's the point. And just letting your mind settle onto that point, the, the palms, the hands are the sort of quickest way into the heart. Letting the back to the arms rest on the ground. And then in the other arm, we can think about the triple heater, which comes from the ring finger, comes up the back of the arm, all the way to the shoulder, just on the back of the shoulder, as if it's just peeking over the top of the shoulder, comes to the side of the neck, it comes to the bottom of the ear, it comes around the ear to the top of the ear where the ear joins the head and then pops across to the end of the eyebrow. The trochoheta is like a sort of whole body system. Some people just associate it with fascia in the body. But if you think about all your organs and the balance and harmony, of all those organs. Triple heater meaning three, the three burners, the burner in the abdomen or lower abdomen area and the upper abdomen area and in the chest. So we're just gonna change sides. So inhale, bring the head back to center. Just bring the legs back into center, center the hips. Just bring the arms in for a moment. Bring in the bolster across to the other side. And then when you're ready, when you've had your little rest in the middle, just shift in the hips to the left, straightening out that right leg and drawing this left leg across and resting it on support. Remember there's many ways of doing a 
recline twist if you have your favorite then please feel free to do your favorite and bringing the arms out broadly right at shoulder height if possible remember the shoulder needs to be supported so if it's not on the ground then bringing in a blanket for that shoulder and just start the timer and then lifting the head and turning it away from the bent leg and thinking about the arm so we're going to turn the right palm down to focus on triple heater in that arm and then the left palm is up to focus on the pericardium in that, that arm. The triple heater coming from the ring finger up through the back of the arm. Right in the middle of the back of the arm to the shoulder. Just behind the shoulder. Running along. And then to the side of the neck. To the bottom of the ear. Closely around the ear to where the ear joins the face and then across to the eyebrow. And even the slightest little movement with your head feels as if you just get a little bit more into that meridian. And you can stretch a meridian just like you would stretch a muscle. And with the other arm, right, think right down through the center line of that arm. It's very balanced to the pericardium or the heart protector, heart governor. So that's uh, like a, a protective sac around the heart. It protects the heart from bump, sort of knocks, bumps, shocks. The pericardium is such a lovely meridian to work with because it's really um, calming the whole system. The triple heater associated in our sort of chest area with the lungs and our heart. Sort of protective energy, protective chi or ki as it's called. Sending that protective energy through the systems. It's like a mist, it's um, something that we can breathe in. And then in the middle burner, around the sort of upper abdomen area, this is sort of to do with our digestion, so stomach and spleen. Do with nutritive key breaking down and digesting and sending the energy from that food up into the heart and the lungs to be distributed around the systems of the body. And gallbladder also associated. And then down into the bottom burner in the abdomen and lower abdomen really associated with our sort of digestive process, the small intestine, large intestine, also our kidney and our bladder and the liver too. So letting go of the waste. And this is like the swampy area. This is the sort of deep composting area of the body. So the soil which sits above it draws the nutrients out of this compost and then the flowers grow up in the chest. That's where the flowers bloom. bloom. Good to come out, so bring the head back to center, undo the legs, bring the legs back into center. Just take a moment, bring the arms in, noticing the whole body. Taking an audible exhale. And then just straightening the legs along the ground. So we're going to work with our final element now. Work with the wood element associated with the gallbladder and the liver. We're going to do banana asana, one of my favorite yin poses to finish. 
So we're going to walk the, keeping the hips still, but try to not let the hips move. I'm going to walk the feet over to the right, and I'm going to walk the shoulders over to the right as well, and hold on to opposite elbows and let the arms rest on the ground. You could hold on to your wrists as well as an alternative, but just adjust so that you can move into the pose as strongly as feels doable. Let's start my clock, my timer. When you've been there for a short while, making sure this left hip isn't rising up, you might be able to cross that left leg over the right to intensify the stretch. But some people also find that the right leg crossing over the left ankle intensifies it more. So just choose which variation creates a little bit more depth for you. You can let the eyes close. You can even let the head sort of fall towards the direction of the side bend. So really focusing on the side of the body. We're just going to do one pose for wood. So we're going to do this banana asana in both directions. The gallbladder is the meridian that runs down the side of the body. It sort of zigzags its way down. So this really does get into the gallbladder meridian. The liver meridian runs up the inside of the legs and it comes up the sort of hip area to just beneath the chest, follows the ribs to just beneath the chest. And the wood element is sort of an expansive energy moving outwards, but it's also about having that sort of rising clear vision energy. It's a time of year associated with spring, it's a time of year when we sort of plan and think about the year ahead. And we really sort of want to prepare for what's coming. And so someone with a strong, healthy wood energy would be someone who really does, is a clear thinker, has that vision. So if out of balance or imbalance, then planning, decision-making is really difficult for you. Being creative is difficult. So as you lie here and breathe, think about breathing in that clarity of vision, that creativeness, that flow. And letting go of any stagnancy, any stuckness, any scattered thinking, any blurred vision, anything that isn't helpful. And really experience that lovely side stretch really opens up into the space between the hip and the ribs and the ribs and the shoulder. Really good for your spine, turn it into a lateral flexion. And great for the breath, you can really sort of draw that breath in through the side body. Okay, so we'll see three minutes, so just do a few more breaths here. Yeah, to come out of it, you just undo, undo the legs. Remember to come out of them slowly. They can be quite intense. Center the legs, center the shoulders. Just give a moment just to completely do nothing in the middle. Just pause. And then when you're ready, walking the feet to the other side, shifting the shoulders to the other side, keeping the hips pointing towards the ceiling as you come and hold onto the elbows above the head. So remember, you can hold the rest as an alternative. Even letting the head just gently drop to the side as well. When you've been there for a few breaths, intensifying the stretch by maybe crossing one ankle over the other. Remembering it's not necessarily so that right over left would make it more intense. You might find that it's the left ankle over right. Really feel creative as you breathe adaptable, flexible, and as you exhale, let go of being inflexible, let go of feeling uncreative. So all these lovely qualities of the wood elements, lots of strength, tenacity, 
Being quite bold, having that strong vision, clarity. Opening up to the ideas that come. Out of balance in a person, they might be quite shouty, quite loud. Someone who likes to exercise, someone who likes to keep fit, associated with muscles and strength. So if you're feeling tired or weak, it could be an imbalance of the wood energy in your body. So this yin practice will really help to support that tiredness, that imbalance, if you have it. This practice really working on the whole body, the whole systems. Trying to find stillness in the pose. Apart from the breath, the breath is moving. Slowly in and slowly out. You can really feel that stretch down through the side of the body, from the hip to the ribs, and from the ribs to the shoulder. See that sort of IT band down the outer edge of the leg from the hip. Just take another breath here. Very gently undo, coming out slowly, walking it back into the center. <sighs> Taking a moment to notice. And then setting up our relaxation pose. So I'm just going to bring a bolster in for my legs. I'm going to bring in something for my hair, just a little raise for the head. If you're cold, making sure you bring in a blanket. Bring the arms out by the side of you, let the feet fall to the outer edges of the mat. Become aware of the breath as it moves in and out of the body. Feel the connection between the body and the ground underneath you. The whole body relaxing and releasing. Begin by bringing your awareness to your right leg, to your right foot, sole of the foot, toes, heel. Notice where the but it's connected to the ground. If your legs aren't supported, then it will just be the heel. Maybe if your legs are supported, there's a little bit more of the side of the foot. Maybe your legs are bent, feet are standing, and you're feeling into the whole of the sole of the foot. I'm aware of the right ankle and shin and calf. Knee. your awareness to the thigh, the front and the back, and then the hip, the pelvis, and that right side, the buttock. The whole of the right leg resting onto the ground. Be aware of any sensations that you feel there. See if you can release them a little bit more towards the ground. And without losing that awareness of that right leg, Shift your main focus to your right hand, to your palm. Notice if the palms are facing up or facing down. 
press the focus into that palm for a moment, the fingers gently curling in, the back of the hand, the wrist. Bring your awareness to the forearm, front, back, elbow, upper arm, shoulder. The whole of the right arm resting into the ground. Have an awareness of the sensations that you feel, that you experience. The shoulder, the shoulder blade. See if you can release into that shoulder blade a little bit more. And without completely losing that right arm and right leg, bring the main focus across through the shoulders to the left shoulder and left arm. Notice the shoulder blade, the shoulder, the upper arm, elbow, forearm, front and back and wrist, hand, palm, fingers curling in softly. Notice if your palm is face up, face down. Notice the weight of the arm resting, whole of the arm and shoulder. Just the limbs growing a little bit heavier without losing the focus of that left arm, right arm or right leg. Shift the main focus across to your left hip. Your left hip buttock. Left thigh, front, back, knee. Left shin, calf, ankle, foot, sole of the foot, toes. All of the left leg and hip. I'm aware of where the leg comes into contact with the ground or support. See if you can give in to that sensation a little bit more. And you rest your awareness into those four limbs. Feel them growing heavier with every breath. Without losing the focus on the four limbs, bring the attention to the head, the back of the head, scalp the forehead. Become aware of your eyebrows, your eye sockets, underneath your sockets, your cheeks, your nose, your lips, your jaw, your chin, and your ears. Become aware of your neck, your throat. Rest the whole of the head, both arms and both legs. Notice the connection to the ground. Bring your awareness to your torso, front and back, your chest your rib cage, your abdomen. Be aware of the breath as it moves, as the body expands and contracts. Bring your awareness to your back, upper back, mid back, lower back. How much of the back is in contact with the ground? Whole of the torso, whole of the head, both arms, both legs. Whole of the body, whole of the mind. Just notice the body deeply releasing back towards the ground underneath you. Give in, let go. Notice how quiet and calm both mind and body feels. How relaxed. How balanced and centered with a feeling of equilibrium through all your systems. Just say to yourself, I am very relaxed. I'm 
And then gently brush the thumb across the tips of the fingers, wriggle the toes. Breathing a little bit more consciously in and out. And then stretching the arms and legs. Bringing the knees towards the body. Having a little rock from side to side. Come and rest onto one side to make your way up to come to sit up. Sitting in a comfortable position, maybe coming, bringing something in for the hips, just the raise. Let the eyes close for a moment. Resting the hands on the legs. Notice the body after that body clock, yin flow practice. Working through the five elements. Maybe a particular element resonated with you, particular postures felt really good to hang about in. Other ones were a little bit more difficult. We tend to have a relationship with one particular element more than another. And it's quite interesting to start to find out which ones you're drawn towards and which ones you find a little bit harder. On an in-breath, let the arms float up, palms come together, bring the hands down, thumbs to the crown of the head, to the third eye, and to the heart center. Om Shanti, Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me.